Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I wish I could pre-zoom in, but I can't. So we'll see if that's too far or not. I don't know. Um, but we're going to do some resin projects tonight. Uh, tomorrow is the first day of fall. So I figured let's go ahead and maybe make some fall inspired dominoes. I got these I feel like from the dollar store. Honestly, I don't remember. I bought them a year or two ago and I'm just now getting a chance to use them. I feel like I got them from the Dollar Tree though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, so let me get this pulled up on my computer so I can chit chat with you guys, say hi. Um, as you tune in, say hi in the chat box. Let me know where you're watching from. Hey Barbara, hey Bidet, hey Judy, hey Veronica. And we'll get started. And hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves. So feel free to thumbs up. Feel free to super chat, super sticker if you have a real good time. Hey Linda. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and get the resin mixed up. And it's pretty simple. I know some of you maybe haven't used resin before, so sometimes it can be a little bit scary. I like to use these cups TCP um, from Amazon and I'm using Mixed Media Girl Artist Resin. Because I am pouring these a little bit deeper than intended into the domino mold, um, I am going to, or I did preheat it a little bit in front of a heater, okay? All right, we've got Texas in the house, Australia, Florida, Indiana. Oh, thanks Rhonda. I'm glad you finally got that reminder. All right, so the domino mold takes about 10 ounces, but I'm gonna do a few projects here. So I'm gonna mix up 20 ounces. I wanna not take too long though, because when you mix up like a big batch of resin, especially if you've preheated it, it can cure faster, definitely. All right, there we go. <laughs> hey Joanne, glad you're joining us here. Are any of you coming to my class in Seguin this weekend? I'm so excited. You made a set of drink coasters recently after a trip into the New England area to see the trees changing colors. So you collected some leaves and then you preserved them in resin. That's awesome. So for this, we're gonna mix three to four minutes. Um, I'm not going to necessarily hold it out that far. It's going to make my arms tired. Yeah, Brandy. I'll see you this weekend. <laughs> so fun. And then, guys, if you are thinking about coming to Fluid Art Experience in Texas in November, um, my my one-on-one -on -one slots, there are only two left. You guys so if you're thinking about that go sign up now here comes the training uh, and then my classes are also filling up pretty quickly my business classes so um, if you're thinking about it I would just go ahead and do it now you can get the best rates on the rooms right now you don't even have to book the room right now just book your classes but the rooms will sell out also so all right when mixing the resin um, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom as you go. You don't need to mix too vigorously. You don't want to enter a bazillion air bubbles in there. But if you're mixing up a lot of resin and doing like a lot of projects, you can use a drill to mix it faster. Hey, Ingrid from Toronto. All right, I'm going to use some gold dust, of course. I'm going to put it in a separate cup though because I don't know that I want gold dust for everything. Um, so this is polycolor, gold metallic dust. Make sure that this is fully mixed up. And let's take a quick vote. I have this um, skeleton hand silicone mold. What should I put in here? I'm thinking it could be cool to just go in there with glow in the dark and then maybe embellish it after I peel it out with like some 
Or I could actually embellish it with mica before I pour in there with some like black or darker colors on the joints. Maybe? Anyways, think about it. <laughs> no, no more hotel room for today. Just for one day though. Tomorrow morning I fly to Texas, so. All right, let's get our gold here. If you don't have a drying rack for paintings, what can I use from home? Um, I mean, I would just say table space. Table, floor, you just need something level. It's pretty easy to make a drying rack though also. But you can use any kind of shelving. Like you can usually get like Ikea, old Ikea shelves for free or used on Facebook Marketplace or things like that. So there's kind of a lot of options. Um, a lot of people use baker's racks. So you can get used baker's racks. Buying them new is pretty expensive, but I just take it an old bookshelf, something like that. Micah with glow in the dark sounds awesome, okay. All right, so here is the domino mold. Let me make sure it is centered in the camera. There's a little delay here. That's a great question. Jerry said, have you ever resin over you coat paper? I actually have not. I think I went the correct direction. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Such a delay. All right. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to spritz it with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And that sometimes you can get little air bubbles around the uh, dots. So spritzing it beforehand really helps with that. Uh -oh. Amanda, I might have missed your question. Please um, say it one more time because it scrolled too fast. So say the whole question in, in one. <laughs> All right. Um, so I put just a tiny bit of gold dust in here. Gives it a little sparkle and makes it not just kind of a solid color. And I am not filling these up completely. I'm just putting a little layer, maybe about halfway full, and just trying to fill them kind of evenly. So I like to do these in two layers so that we'll get a solid colored background. And... Ooh, let's start thinking about what colors for the dots. Maybe gold? It could go brown, but I think gold would be better. Yeah. I guess we can also decide when we take them out, too. Sometimes maybe a certain color will call to us. But yeah, I think gold could be cool. All right. Get, just trying to get these pretty even. It's not necessarily the fastest process, but it doesn't take too long. There we go. What other colors are there? I actually have pretty much every color. Um, I've got white, orange, blue, green, silver, black, white, everything, you know? Okay, Mary said, what's the difference between two-part epoxy resin and two-part casting resin? So epoxy resin and casting resin aren't necessarily different things. Um, both are epoxy resins. This is an artist resin, so it is meant to make art pieces. It has maximum uh, UV protection, it has heat resistance, etc. When uh, using a casting epoxy, casting epoxies are meant to be poured deeply. Um, so inches thick, like for a river table, something like that. Those do not have all the same UV protection and stuff like that. Okay. So Amanda's looking for a link to gold foil. No, I, I clarified it before. Okay. <laughs> um, should you have them dry inside or outside? Oh, I would definitely say inside. Outside they will all crack and get bugs in them. So I'm trying not to make these too uniform, but I guess I'm kind of going in a little bit of a pattern. I thought 
these leaves were different sizes, but it appears that they're all the same size. And I already broke a pattern. Oh well. <laughs> That's okay. I'm also trying to go semi-fast because I don't want this other resin sitting in my cup. Do not ask me why I did what I just did. No reasoning. Okay. Where did you get the leaves? I believe at the Dollar Tree. I, in full disclosure, I got them last year and just never got a chance to use them. Um, I do, I want to do more than one layer of leaf. So here's what we're going to do. I hate to say it, we're going to take a small break from this one. She was saying put gold foil in the Halloween hand. Oh, <laughs> okay. Now we're tracking. Now we're tracking. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have gold foil on me right now. And that's a little bit more of a sticky project. I'm just gonna, mm, let me think, okay. Think Marcy, organize yourself for a second. All right, one other thing we're gonna be doing today which has nothing to do with fall whatsoever, which is probably the fastest out of all of these. So maybe I'll do that one first. <laughs> I got these set of double 12 domino molds from Etsy a while back. I've not had a chance to try them. Um, I got a set of double 15 before. I don't know if you guys remember, I did that on a live. And the problem was they were different sizes. These, however, look like they are the same size. So I feel like these will work out. Let me straighten them a little bit. Um, they, are, they are much more thin though. Like, can you guys see the difference? much smaller. These are more the regular sized dominoes. Um, so I'm thinking I will probably realistically only be able to do one layer in these. We could do the mica though. No? Okay. We're just going to do one, one color. We'll make it a pretty one. Blue. With it, blue dye and the blue green mica, maybe. Okay. That really pretty one that you like. Okay. And maybe some gold. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Okay. The one yeah. you did on the back of the earthy dog. Oh yeah, that's. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. I'm just saying random things yeah. and hoping that you'll put okay. them all together. <laughs> so yeah, for this we're gonna just we'll do one color. So we're gonna do the Lumalite Ocean Blue dye. And we want it to be pretty transparent. I mean, not transparent, sorry, opaque. I said the opposite. And I'm gonna mix in some gold mica, which is going to make it this really pretty golden green. And for good measure, we should put gold dust. Make it extra sparkly. <laughs> okay. So what's the difference between resin used in jewelry and the resin you're using to make dominoes? So, um, I think you're talking about the UV resin. UV resin is a resin that is cured with UV light. Um, it's only good for small projects. You would not use it to make these dominoes because it would never cure because UV light can't get through that blue. Um, so that's why you see the clear tape being put on the back of those for the UV projects but it doesn't have any of the same qualities, basically. So it doesn't have the UV protection, doesn't have the heat protection. Um, obviously it's pretty, fairly unlimited work time as long as you're staying away from UV light. <laughs> as soon as UV light hits it, it's all over. Yes, you can use this resin in jewelry. I have done it many times. All right, for this, we are gonna fill these up fully. Hopefully I made enough. I did not test how much these take at all. I just kind of eyeballed it. I could be wrong. Let's do one full set, one full uh, mold. Yeah, if these work out, if I like them, um, I will make sure to get you guys the link for the mold. But thus far, I haven't really found good molds for larger sets of dominoes. I feel like someday I'm just going to have to make my own. Yeah, it doesn't run out. <laughs> I 
think I was thinking with like putting only filling them half full like I normally do, but I'm filling them all the way. So, oh well, that's okay. We'll mix up some more. Find that when the resin is all dried, that the sides that hit the sides up curve more than flat part. Um, I think you mean the kind of like lip that comes at the top sometimes. Um, yeah, that is pretty common with putting resin into silicone molds. That's pretty guaranteed to happen. Uh, so you can just lightly sand down those edges if they're sharp. Some people put more resin into the backs of them, but I feel like that is far too much work. It's much easier to just sand them lightly. And yeah, Tina, Veronica just got you the link there. And hopefully, it, guys, if I miss any questions, just know it has nothing to do with you. It's just me. <laughs> um, oh, I've got more here. Is this? I can't easily read everything and do this at the same time. So if I miss anything, just repeat it. Yeah, so if you get a lip, that is very, very, very common. I, I definitely get that as well. Uh, just, just take some sandpaper and lightly sand it down. Amanda, you're going to have to wait. Sorry. Resin's got a time limit, especially when you heat it up, so... This will go pretty fast though. But feel free to go and come back if you need to. Yeah, I want to kind of take my time on that one and make sure I make it nice. And then we'll do the mica on the hand and then I'll mix up the resin for that. Sometimes I just get a little too excited and try to do everything at once. Um, no, because I only sand the edge. I don't sand the back of the piece. So you just have to be careful. And it shouldn't scratch up your resin unless you're not very careful. Yeah, I, I actually bought this mold, I don't even know how long ago, like at least six months ago, I want to say. So, finally decided today was the day to just try it out. Alright. There we go. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Barbara. Yeah, if you guys remind me, and if I have time, at the end of the video, I can show you how I would uh, sand a lip gently. I think, let's see, do we have sandpaper in here anywhere? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I've got resin in all of these. Now it's just a matter of making them even and making sure they're all, is enough in all of them, which is not quite as easy for these because they're smaller. So it's a lot easier to overfill. <laughs> Did not mix that mold mic in there very well. That's okay. That's okay. And if you do overfill, you just take your stick and move it into the next compartment. I did overfill on a couple of these. How's everyone's week going? Let me know. Hope you're having a good week. Hope everyone's excited for fall. Okay. Pretty good. A couple more and then we're done on this set. So I'm just keeping this real simple. Um, because it is a larger set, I don't know that I would do these live if I'm doing multiple colors and layers because I feel like that would just take forever. Um, 
So I think for the first try, just doing a solid color is probably a good idea. All right, there we go. I think that's pretty good. Um, you always wanna make sure that you get rid of the air bubbles. So I'm gonna use my isopropyl alcohol, spritz it. And then I'll let it sit for a little while and I will come back and spritz it again. So for now, I'm just gonna carefully move these to the side and not dump them out. And then we'll have plenty of time to work on our fall ones here. You want this? You need gloves, baby. All right. So thank you all for your your patience here on these guys. All right. Move a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So. I definitely want to do more than one leaf in each of these. Although I think it would look cute also with just one, but I'm thinking maybe all three colors in each one could be cute. They'll still look a little bit different because the colors will be in different positions in theory. What do you guys think? All three colors in each? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> mine is going pretty good. Tina, thank you. So Mary said, so when using darker colored molds, I can use mica powders or ink to make colored items. I don't entirely understand your question. The color of the mold won't affect anything unless you're using UV resin, in which case, Typically the molds are clear so that the light can go all the way through and it can fully cure it. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if they're blue, white, gray, orange, pink, purple, it really doesn't matter. So, uh, but I'm gonna show you in just a second how I'm gonna do the mica on this this hand here, okay? Oh, almost missed that one. All right. I think these are gonna be super cute. I'm trying not to put the uh, leaves in the same direction also on all of them. Did you know that the dominoes in that mold are not in any particular order? <laughs> I did. I learned that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. The hard way or the not hard way? Pretty much the hard way. Like, okay. I did a set of dominoes. I was like, I don't want these all to be in the same order, so I'm going to, like, make it all random. And then when oh. I demolded them, like, so many were in the same order. <laughs> like, I don't think I could have made them in the same order if I tried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty bad. That's funny. But they still turned out. So these will be done in two layers, but uh, after this, after I get all these leaves in here, I am gonna pour a little more resin over the top, just to make sure that the leaves are fully covered. Can you guys see these okay from that distance? <laughs> uh, Joanne Veronica is here with me, also known as the Charming Giraffe. Um, she is one of my moderators. She's also my assistant. And if you come in November to Fluid Art Experience, you may meet her. We'll see. We can talk her into coming. Who knows? <laughs> she is also from that place where Brandy's from. Oh, Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. Yeah, Oklahoma. <laughs> place for brain. <laughs> okay. All right. I think these are going to be super cute. I agree. I kind of wish realistically, like I think it would be better if the leaves were different sizes, but still we'll make it work. Okay. Oh no. All right. That one gets four leaves. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, 
happy little accidents, right? Oh, good. Okay, almost done. Down to almost the last row. Uh oh. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> do -do -do. So these may not all have all three colors. I'm just saying. And some may have extra. That's okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, link to Veronica's channel is there. So check her out. Alright, and these are like, um, they're foil, basically. So they're hard pieces. Um, you can put pretty much anything in resin. So if you have like cloth ones or even paper ones would be fine. One thing I have found with colored foil though, be careful um, when you're spraying it with alcohol. Sometimes you might wanna test it beforehand. I have had it happen to where I sprayed it and then the color kind of came off of the foil because a lot of times they're just, it's basically just painted on, you know? How else they're gonna get that color on there? I don't know. Kind of odd sometimes, like what will come off and what won't. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Yeah, and guys, if you are interested, um, after my live at, I think, in about 30 minutes, basically, Joanne Ralston has her live also. Aw, Joanne subscribing. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit more resin, basically, and just kind of drizzle it over these leaves. And that should help too if we, if I, when I spray it with the alcohol, I think. Makes sense. We'll find out. Yeah, seems logical. And then what color for the back? I was thinking like a golden brown or like a brown, sparkly brown. Could be actually cream color would look best because then it's yeah because it's going to show through whatever color i put on the background is going to show through so i don't want to do something that will take away from the color of the leaves because it being too dark would yeah. make the whole thing look dark yeah that's very true okay good glad we talked that through <laughs> all right excellent so these are essentially done i can come back with a little more drizzling here but i'm out of resin in this cup so let's set that aside. Uh, can you guys see this from that distance or would you like a close up? Hopefully you guys can see it. Um, yeah, my resin is good for most everything. You just have to learn to use it. So it's not necessarily intended to be poured this deep, but once you get to know it a little bit, all you, all you have to do is preheat it and it's totally fine. So it's kind of, yeah. Um, the Dainty Doer, uh, anyone know of a good box mold? I personally prefer putting them in the bags, but I bet you Veronica can maybe find you a box mold. There's one on Amazon, I've never used it, so I don't know the quality. Okay. I can find it for you if you're interested. Yeah. All right, so let's, that's basically done. Let's go ahead and work on this guy. So I'm going to show you um, how we can color this in specific spots and then we're going to um, put the glow in the dark in there. I'm going to take a little paintbrush and see what color. I think we'll go with like almost a black. Mm. Okay, I have deep silver metallic. Let's do that. That's basically the same as the black. Maroon for the background or yellow. 
Uh, well, we don't want anything dark because it'll take away from the colors of the leaves. So like a light yellow could work. Okay, so I'm gonna just take my brush and I'm basically gonna just kind of go in here on the joints with the mica powder. And that's gonna just color those specific areas so rather than coloring the whole thing. It's kind of gonna be like shading in theory. If this color is dark enough, hopefully. Now that I'm putting it on here, it looks lighter. <laughs> but I couldn't find my black. Do all of these joints here. Sometimes it's not that easy to kind of get in there, but. And it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't take um, a lot. You wanna go pretty light on the mica. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Evelyn. Hopefully all goes well. All right, now in here, I think I'm just gonna add silver just into these spots. It's just a little bit, just a little kind of hint. And then I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. So it's not just concentrated there. I'm going to come around and show you guys this close up. Oh, I missed one. So you can kind of see how light it is. See that? It looks lighter uh, color wise in here, but I meant like the application of it. I did not put a lot. I missed this one joint over here though. So I've got to get that one and I might put a little bit more down here. I think that'll look pretty cool, especially with the glow in the dark. Oh, I should do here too. Okay. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. <laughs> I missed all the spots. <laughs> you could go light gray on the leaves, the back of those. Yeah, that could be cool. Shake off any excess, and that is now ready to go. It's ready to just be poured into. All right. So we're still totally within the cure time. I'm gonna just use the same mixing bucket. I have no idea how much resin this mold holds, but I am not going to fill it all the way up at all. That'd be way too much. Uh, this is, I don't remember what it's for. I got it from Michael's. I feel like it's for making like a cake. So hopefully it even works for this. It should be fine. It is silicone. Yeah, it's a cake mold. You're right. Um, resin paste. I typically get mine from Artist Till Death. Joanne, I'm fine. Thank you. But feel free to absolutely use whatever PPE you would like. I'm mixing up 16 ounces just to be safe. I feel like I'll probably end up putting at least 10 in there. When I say 16, I mean 18. Um, and then I'm going to put a little more in these dominoes. And then if we need to, we can put it in something else. Now this isn't as preheated, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. It may just have some more air bubbles, but I don't mind that at all. Yeah, I love Artist Till Death channel as well, and they will be teaching the class in Texas with me this week, this weekend. Also, if any of you just wanna pop by, I mean, don't disrupt the class or anything, but you know, if you wanna come by after the class and say hi or something, that's always okay. But Seguin is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Jerry, this is actually zero VOC resin. Um, that does not mean you shouldn't use a mask. But for me, it's just a personal choice for anybody. Just like with anything. 
I, yeah, I will leave it at that. <laughs> Have a large unicorn silicone cake mold. Ooh, awesome. That's cool. Yeah, I don't bake cakes at all, but I'll do resin. <laughs> Uh, I feel like this mold is matte also, so that's going to be interesting. Okay, so this is pretty well mixed up. Definitely more air bubbles in it because of the uh, fact that it's kind of cold in here. AC is on full blast. Ooh, ATD is having a sale. Well, if anyone has uh, that info, feel free to post it in here. And make sure you're on their newsletter list too, because then you get all the emails about the sales. I do think I saw that now that you mention it. All right, we're gonna use blue, uh, glow green, glow blue, 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 blue. <laughs> Those words. Words. Blue, blue. So this is also poly color, blue glow powder. Um, first, I'm gonna pour a little bit into here with, for the dominoes. Should I use this? Yeah. I can lighten it up with the glue, the blue glow. I'm just gonna use the rest of this, might as well. Don't want it to go to waste. I'm gonna put a lot of the blue glow powder in here. Yeah, I would not be intimidated. And uh, you're gonna just follow the instructions on the bottle. So no one can really say mix one to one or one to two, it just follow the instructions on the bottle. That's my best advice. All right. We have new cups for you to demo. I save them for when you're out of town. <laughs> I see. Okay. I mean, which cups are you talking about? The little ones or the big buckets? Probably these ones because they have the multiple measurements. Yeah, so it, uh, I'm sorry I didn't say that it was art resin, but yeah, art resin is mixed one to one as per the instructions on the bottle. So um, you can, I would just go by the ounces, honestly. Mix like six of A and, and then another six of B or whatever. Uh, the measurements on the sides of the cup. Up here, you can see the ratios. It says one to one, two, one, one, three, one, one. So if you want to use this, you would make, literally put one and then one, or one and then one. But I just use the ounces. Oh, thanks, Joanne. Appreciate it. All right, I think this is gonna be awesome. I'm going to spritz this with alcohol ahead of time because there are some little spots that I'm a little worried about getting air bubbles in. And here we go. Here goes nothing. I'm pretty excited about this. What am I gonna do with it when I demold it? No idea. It's gonna be a killer paperweight? I don't know. That one is 32 ounces, is that right? The cup, yes. Yeah. And these little Pixis cups from Amazon are eight ounces. And they have ounce measurements and mill, uh, milliliters, so they're fantastic. All right, so that's exciting. Okay. So we do have a little bit of resin left. I'm just filling in some more on these guys. What should we do with the rest of that resin? Ooh, good question. Something ideally a shorter project, because <laughs> I got to go. So this is going to, the bubbles are gonna keep coming up for a while. So I like to spray it uh, now. And then I'll let it sit for probably like 15 minutes and let the bubbles continue to pop up. All right, we are going to do some of these beautiful coaster molds. 
how do you clean your cups? So these small ones, unfortunately you can't really clean, but you can um, reuse if you'd like. The bigger ones here, you just let the resin dry and peel it out. It's pretty, pretty simple. This can actually go a little bit towards you. Sure, go for it. Okay. We might have even more resin left over. All right, let's see. I'm gonna just do blue dye in here. Should we do this as a dirty pour? Yeah. All right, we're gonna do this as a dirty pour. Yeah, you can also clean the resin out when it's wet, if you would like, with some isopropyl alcohol. Um, I don't think that's worth it for these littler cups. But totally up to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Set a four hands. Just white? Yeah. Okay, so white, gold, and blue, basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's... And you have fixed this cup at the top. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. You can come down. Yeah. Alright, so alright. Yeah, you never want to waste your resin. Use every drop. <laughs> well, this could be like every four cup, though. Yeah, so just one. All right. Good. So I'm going to use some Alumilite white dye. Now the white dye is pretty opaque. So when I do a dirty resin pour, I like to have a mixture of opaque and transparent. Uh, you don't want them to all be transparent or the colors just kind of blend together. So we'll have the blue is semi-transparent, the gold is pretty transparent, and then the white will be opaque. So the gold will kind of hide as we pour it out. Do not get surprised or disappointed. It does make a big difference. It's not disappearing. It's not going anywhere. Uh, what it does is it will add sparkle and then it will affect the color as well. So it'll give this blue um, a golden tint, the blue dye. And then, you know, it just, it affects the color. So whether you wear a respirator when using resin or not is totally up to you. This resin has zero VOCs, but you need a very well ventilated space. And if you have any concern over it, just go ahead and use a respirator. But I can't tell you necessarily whether you should wear one or not. I think it's always better to be safe than sorry. Um, but I personally, don't typically wear them when doing live videos because otherwise y'all couldn't hear me. Uh, but if I'm doing a larger project or if I'm not in a well ventilated space, I will wear one. So, yeah. Oh, Johnny's here. Hello. All right. Let's get these all mixed up. Should we tell them about the art auction? Oh yeah, there's an art auction on Facebook that is ending tomorrow. So uh, make sure you guys check that out. It's in my albums on there. Also, there is a special sale for uh, quite a few of my art supplies that is also posted on Facebook. It is pinned to the top and that ends tonight. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. If you want to try some pouring paints or some resin or something like that, Pretty good discount in there. Okay, let's layer these up. I think I might have enough for four. So I'm gonna start off with the white and I'm gonna put not huge amounts, but not tiny amounts either. And I'm pouring down the side of the cup so that hopefully I don't blend the colors too much as I'm going here. See how much resin we have. And just these three colors, it's gonna look gorgeous. I can already tell that. Okay. 
You can use as many colors as you want. Just keep in mind with a dirty pour, the colors will blend much more than with a clean pour. So certain colors, if you don't really know how they react, they will hide. Like that gold, you're not going to totally see it at the end. The white and the blue will definitely take over, but it will, it will be an important part of the coloring. <laughs> Trust me. If you didn't put it in there, you'd get a completely different result. Sometimes people get so sad. They're like, oh no, it disappeared, but it really didn't. It just changed. That's all. Getting every drop out here. Okay, now for the fun part. Woo, here we go. Train. Train is ready. My dad is doing fantastic. Just saw him, so that was a lot of fun. We got to spend a few days together, hang out, get caught up, discuss all our hopes and dreams. I think he's figuring out what he wants to be when he grows up. He'll figure it out sooner or later. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So I'm going to do this in kind of a tree ring. Now, of course, because we have a layered cup here, the colors aren't going to come out exactly the same in each mold. That's okay. Oh my gosh, you need to quiet down over there. I have three cup turners on and one of them is definitely making some noise. I don't know. So I'm hoping we either get a set of four here or at least two sets of two in terms of coloring. I think we will. These look like a good match. This one needs a little more resin in it. And also don't be married to the design that initially comes out because once again, it's resin. It is going to change as it dries. It's going to keep moving, essentially. That's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. When will you reveal these all done? That is a fantastic question. Let's go for next Wednesday. All right, spritzing them with alcohol. Shazam. Now we leave. <laughs> the cup turns sounds like music. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Resin is going to resin, exactly. <laughs> okay, you guys, well, that's all we have for today. Um, I really appreciate you guys joining me, and uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't yet. I hope to see you back next Wednesday. I should be able to show you all of these dry by then. I will be in Texas, but I come back, I think, on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. So Wednesday should be perfectly fine. Okay, guys, have a fantastic rest of your week. I'll see you all next time.